Okay. So today we're going to learn about the chain rule. The chain rule is another rule of differentiation. Um, so another rule like the power rule, for example. Um, we're taking derivatives of functions in a very quick manner. Okay, so instead of using the definition of the derivative, I can just use the power rule on this. And remember that was that the power comes down and it becomes 10 times x to the 10 minus 1 or 9th power. Okay? So we learned all kinds of rules. We learned the product rule and the quotient rule and the sum rule, constant multiplier rule, um, rules for derivatives of trig functions. So for example, the derivative of sine is cosine of x. Okay? But what we didn't learn was what happens if we do this? Well, we take the derivative of sine of x to the tenth. Okay? Well, we know how to take these two derivatives individually. Okay? And this isn't a product. Okay? This isn't sine times x to the tenth. This is a composition. This is x to the tenth inside of sine. Okay? Now, when we want to take derivatives of compositions, this is where we need the chain rule. Okay? Now, most functions that we're going to run across are going to have at least one composition in them. Okay? So the chain rule becomes very important. Okay? So let's look at the chain rule. The chain rule says if little f of x and g of x are differentiable, and big F is equal to the composition of f and g. Okay, so remember the definition of composition f composed with g is f of g of x. Okay? Then the composition f is differentiable, and here's the important part. We also know how to take the derivative. The derivative of this composition is the derivative of f composed with g. Okay? Notice I didn't take the derivative of the inside here, but I'm going to tack on as what we call a chain the derivative of the inside. Okay. Now this is the important part again, right here. Okay. Okay. But really, um, to get a feel of the chain rule, it's all about examples. This section, more than any other section, we really need to look at a bunch of examples. Okay. Because the chain rule has a lot of working parts to it. Okay. The first thing on a chain rule problem. Okay. Well, I guess the first thing is to recognize that you need a chain rule. Okay? And if you just think that you need a chain rule on most problems, it's probably the safer bet. Okay? Because most functions do have some type of composition to them. Okay? All right. Well, the first thing that we need to do, besides recognizing that we need the chain rule, is figuring out what plays the role of f, what plays the role of g. Okay? Well, f is my outermost function. And the way that I usually think of figuring out what the outer function is, is by taking a number, say x is equal to 2, and plugging it in just into here. Not taking a derivative, just plugging into here and doing a computation. Well, the first thing I would do is I do 2 times 2. Then I would add 1 to that. So I get 4 plus 1 is 5. And then as a computation, I'd raise this whole thing to the 10th power. Okay? So it's because raising to the 10th power was the last thing that I did, that is my outermost function. Okay? So this is where I want to start with the derivative of this outermost function. What's the derivative of a 10th, not the number 10, but a 10th power? Okay? Well, the derivative of a 10th power is that the 10 comes down. We subtract 1 from the power, just like on the first page. Okay? Now notice that I left this blank inside of here. Um, to point out that we want to not take the derivative of this inside. Okay? We want to just leave that alone. Okay? Now we want to tack on as our chain the derivative of g, which is the derivative of what's inside of here. So the derivative of 2x plus 1. Okay? So we are taking the derivative of 2x plus 1, but it's going outside as a multiple. Okay? So, let's just finish this computation out. What's the derivative of 2x plus 1? Well, the derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of 1 is 0. So we just end up with 2 plus 0, or 2. Okay. Simplifying this, 2 times 10 is 20. We get 20 times 2x plus 1 to the ninth. Okay. So again, the chain rule takes a lot of practice. It just takes some time to get used to what's the outer function, what's the inner function, and how do we take the derivative of that. 
right? So we're going to look at as many examples as we can in the next 10 minutes or so. Okay. So let's look at the derivative of sine of x squared. Okay. So again, if I think about plugging in a value of x, let's say x is equal to 3 this time. Okay. Well, the first thing I would do is I go 3 squared, which is 9, okay, and then I would take sine of 9. Okay. What's the last thing that I did? I took sine of something. So sine is my outer function here. Okay. Well, what's the derivative of sine? The derivative of sine is cosine. Okay. Now, cosine of what? Well, I know I want to take the derivative of x squared, but not inside of your function. Okay. So I want to do cosine of x squared and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay. All right, well, what's the derivative of x squared? That's just 2x. Okay, so 2x times cosine. And remember that we typically write algebra terms before we write trig terms. So I rearrange this like this. Okay. Now, as you do more of these and you're tacking on these chains, the derivative of the inside, you might get more and more comfortable and not actually write this step and just jump straight to here. Okay if you can do the derivative of x squared in your head. Okay? But right now I recommend that you actually write this just so you can know where all the terms are coming from. Okay? Let's look at another one. Let's say the derivative of sine squared of x. Okay? This looks very similar to this. Okay? Okay? So remember that sine squared of x is the shortcut or shorthand for writing sine of x all squared. Okay, we write the square there so as not to get confused with this term. Okay. All right. Well, if we look at this, especially if we look over here, we can see that if I were to plug in an x, say x is equal to zero, the first thing I would do is sine of zero, which is zero, and then I would square that. So my outer function is this square right here. Okay. What's the derivative of a square? Well, that's a power. Okay, so we use the power rule. The 2 comes down. It becomes sine to the first. Now, you typically don't write to the first power. So this is our power rule. The 2 came down. We subtract 1 from the power. And then we need to tack on our chain, the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of what was inside of our square. Okay, and what was inside of our square, again, it's easier to look over here. The derivative inside of the square is the derivative of sine. And what's the derivative of sine? Well, that's cosine. I got ahead of myself there. So we end up with 2 sine of x. Derivative of sine is cosine of x. Okay. All right, well, let's look at one more trig example. Let's say the derivative of cosine of x cubed plus 2x. Okay. Now if you want some practice right now, go ahead and pause the video for a while and try this one on your own. Okay, I'll just stop talking for a second. Okay, and then once you're done, restart the video and see if you got it right. Okay, so um, hopefully you're back and you tried this problem, and hopefully you discovered that the outer function here is cosine. Okay. So if we take an x value and we plug it in, first we would cube it, then we would add 2 times x, and then once we computed all this, we would take cosine of that. So that's my outer function. Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Okay. Again, I don't want to change the inside of that outer function. So it's negative sine of x cubed plus 3x. And then as a chain, we're going to tack on the derivative of the inside. Okay. Well, look at this. This is just a bunch of power rules. Okay. So what's the derivative of x cubed? That's 3x squared. The derivative of 2x is 2. Okay. And again, notice I switched this. So this is out in front. Okay. okay. We also have a negative floating around. That would typically go in front of even the algebra terms. And then the trig term goes in the back. Okay. So hopefully we got something that looked like that. Right. 